in the sky. You mean flying? So you want to learn to fly? Welcome to the world of paragliding. The aim of this film is to introduce you to this amazing sport and to explain the basic skills and theoretical knowledge that are essential for a long, safe and rewarding flying career. Man has always dreamed of free flying, the ability to fly like a bird and view nature and landscapes from a different perspective without the need of an engine or cumbersome machine. With paragliding, this is possible. All that is required is the correct equipment, training and knowledge. A paraglider is a foot-launched, ram-air, aerofoil canopy designed to be flown and landed with no other energy requirements other than the wind, gravity and the pilot's muscle power. Paragliding offers different types of flying and is a very personal thing, whether it be gently soaring flights in smooth air or epic cross-country adventures in strong thermals or even radical aerobatics. The choice is yours. In any case, keep in mind that safety is the most important issue for a long flying career. Regardless of the direction you take, right now you're at a stage that all of them have in common, your initiation. Paragliding is organized within each country by a national federation. Their role is to oversee the sport as a whole, regulating the quality of training, organizing insurance and securing the rights for pilots to continue flying with all the current restraints on airspace. The quality of the training you receive is extremely important as it establishes a strong foundation of learning and skills that will carry you throughout your flying career. Paragliding is a potentially dangerous activity. It's important that you're aware of this fact before going any further. You'll have to carefully evaluate the quality and reputation of the training you intend to receive. Many schools offer quality training courses encompassing both theoretical and practical aspects of flying. This DVD does not replace proper training in a recognized school. It is intended to be used as an aid to your learning experience so that you can review any stage of your training in your own time. We will use animations to help visualize the theoretical course material dealing with the aerodynamics of flight, meteorology, and regulations. Experienced instructors will show you how to perfectly inflate a canopy using both the forward and reverse techniques. This will give you an idea of the skills you should be aiming to learn. So you've decided to learn how to paraglide. It's probably one of the most exciting things you will have done in a long time. But remember, safety and fun are the main priorities. You must stay within the limits of your experience and be progressive and don't skip over any of your training stages. Learning how to paraglide never ceases. There is always something to learn and improve on. This is one of the many factors that makes it so intriguing and addictive. We hope you enjoy this film. Good luck with your training and future flights. The wingspan averages about 10 to 12 meters and the cord measures 2 to 3 meters. The cord is the greatest distance between the two edges of the wing. 
Its surface area ranges from 20 to 30 square meters. The section of the wing in red is called the leading edge. It has openings which air flows into when inflating and then during the flight, hardening the wing into its characteristic shape. The rear section of the wing in the foreground of the image is called the trailing edge. Here is where the upper and lower surfaces of the wing reconnect to form an airfoil. The extremities of the wing are called stabilizers. The surface of the wing on top is called the upper surface. The surface of the wing on the bottom is called the lower surface. The hollow space between the upper and lower surfaces is separated into several cells by ribs. The openings we see here are used to inflate the wing. The circulation of air between cells is made possible by holes in the ribs. Near the leading edge, the fabric used for the rib is much more rigid. Nylon or polyester threads are meticulously stitched to make the fabric flexible and light while at the same time extremely resistant. The wing is connected to the harness by carabiners. These carabiners are considerably oversized and can withstand weights exceeding 2,000 kilograms. There are several different locking systems, auto-locking as seen here, twist locking or screw gate locking. Moving up towards the wing, we first come across the network of risers. Each riser, usually three or four of them depending on the model, is attached to the suspension lines which in turn are attached to the wing. Attached to the rear riser is the braking system. The brake line is directly linked to the wing's trailing edge and slides along a pulley. At the end of each riser, a triangular quick link connects a group of suspension lines from a section of the wing. Moving from one riser towards its group of suspension lines, you'll notice that the lines branch out twice into mids and uppers. The A risers or front risers are attached to the leading edge. The B and C risers are attached to the middle and the D risers, also known as rear risers, are connected near the wing's trailing edge. The distribution of the wing's suspension points places uniform stress upon the entire wing, thus giving it the correct airfoil shape and also helping to evenly distribute the pilot's weight throughout the wing.